So we've seen the Maduro government proclaim victory after the referendum. Uh, I believe that the consequences are disastrous and the outcome is disastrous for Maduro. Um, we knew that once the referendum went ahead, that they will succeed in getting a yes vote. Venezuela for the past 50 years at least has been telling the people of Venezuela that Esequibo belongs to them. So you've seen many opposition parties in Venezuela say, why do you need a referendum to go and reaffirm that Esequibo belongs to us? So, but what was important for Maduro would have been the size of the victory. And from all that we have seen, it was a low turnout victory that he had. So they claim that about 50% of the eligible voters turned out at, these, at this referendum. This was the electoral council. We know that that figure is a rigged figure. The, all day long we saw images from the polling places and reports from Latin, the Latin American press pointing out that it was an abysmally low turnout and people were not interested in the referendum. So miraculously, they extended the time frame in the evening, claiming that they had large numbers of people at polling places, which, was, which wasn't factual, and then manufactured a 50% turnout of eligible voters. But even if we assume for a moment that the 50% turnout was real, it meant that, and that only half of the eligible voters showed up at the poll, and of the half that showed up at the poll, uh, at least 5% voted no, maybe 5% voted no. So that meant that it was less than half of the total eligible voters who voted yes at these refer this referendum that was held. That cannot be seen as a mandate, that cannot be seen as a victory, especially in light of what I said earlier, that they have been hyping people up, these major campaigns they've had, um, and, and then the historical fact that they've always told people, lied to them, the Venezuelans, that Esequibo will belong to them. So we believe that Maduro had no choice but to rig the outcome, and he had no choice but to claim victory. But in fact, it was a defeat um, given the low turnout. People just rejected that. They saw it as a distraction from the electoral problems that Maduro faces at home. And in court during the hearings, Nelson Rodriguez has said that whatever the outcome, that the Venezuelan government wouldn't turn its back on, on what comes out of the referendum. Yes. How does Ghana deal with that? Well, Maduro has been saying to the leaders that he has no intention of invading Ghana. He said this to CARICOM leaders and for, to all of those who spoke with him. We have had the opportunity to speak with many of those leaders here at COP and they have all said in their conversations with him, this is what he has said. They have, the lawyer to the ICJ said the same thing. Delcio Rodriguez said they're not going to turn their back. Uh, uh, we don't believe on, on the outcome. We don't believe they have a mandate for anything. And secondly, that they will in, invade Guyana. And if you look at the assessment done by CNN and many international bodies, they believe too, because they speak to a lot of um, people in the Venezuela, in the military, in the US intelligence circles, people believe that Venezuela will not invade. But we cannot, the, the leadership in Guyana cannot just take assurances from the Maduro government that they will not be, invade the country, even if that is so. 
we have to be prepared for any eventuality and we must not let our guard down or um, let ourselves be less vigilant. We have to be very vigilant in this upcoming period because the Venezuelan leadership has shown itself to be very unpredictable and therefore that is why we have been working with our partners um, to ensure that we enhance defense cooperation that should the worst outcome um, happen that we can defend our country by all means necessary. What does defense cooperation mean? Defense cooperation means defense cooperation. It means that we are engaging, we are coordinating efforts. These, those who um, are, are engaged with us, are working with us to build our capacity, or not just planning capability, but um, the, 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 to look at protecting our territorial integrity. Um, I, we, are, we are not a belligerent country, and we are not one that will threaten Venezuela. So we are acting purely in a precautionary manner and in a defense capability. But, but that doesn't mean that should they defy the International Court of Justice or defy the consensus in the world that we will just sit down and accept it. So, and therefore, this is defense cooperation means preparing for the worst outcome. Hmm. So if Venezuela were to attempt something even remotely like what happened with Ancoco, Guyana is ready? Yeah, I don't want to deal with hypotheticals because we don't want to seem as belligerent as Venezuela has been because they, that's language for them. We have made it clear we are before the ICJ um, we will not remove our case from the ICJ. We, the ICJ has made it clear that they intend to hear the case to its finality. We believe we have a strong case. Venezuela will have a very hard time proving that the 1899 award was flawed. And we believe that we'd have an entirely positive ruling in our favor once the matter, the, the, the matter, the substantive matter is concluded definitively by the court. And therefore, we are interested in pursuing this peaceful means, a mean that is part of the Geneva Agreement. And uh, um, therefore, we don't want to sound belligerent. Right. So as you're being vigilant and in, and in preparing for these hearings and so on, how, does, how has that affected the work of government? And, and the, does things slow down um, because you're concentrating on this issue? No, no. We are focused on our development agenda. We are focused on exercising sovereignty of our, over our resources and utilizing those resources in sovereign Guyanese territory, all 83,000 square miles, um, utilizing those resources in favor and to the benefit of all of our people. We have not changed or slackened the pace on any of our development programs. So the work of government continues. And I would, would say to the people of Guyana, don't get caught up in this incessant, um, almost traumatic experience of worrying unnecessarily and sharing things that may not be the truth. Just last night, the, the Ghana Defense Force had had to, to issue a statement. People were circulating that a flag was raised over our territory. It was not so. But by the time they clarified that, Tens of thousands of shares had been done in Guyana. It, it's as though we have this collective view of self-punishment and, and not just antagonizing people, but, but causing a great deal of uneasiness and worry to many people in our country. I want them to be, 
rest assured that we're doing all necessary to keep our borders safe and we will we will take whatever steps necessary to do so and venezuela will not succeed will not succeed on this issue will not no, thank you very much okay you're welcome